No like compassion. That. Without compassion, yeah. without sorrow, without looking back. Just dispose of these people because they are of the lower order. A non-Scientologist is a wog. Right? So my seven joiner wogs. Exactly. Which uh, That comes straight from Hubbard's very racist background, if mm. you like. But a non-Scientologist is a wog. You're a lower order human being. The Scientologist is a higher order human being. So you can, you can see it's elitism. Yeah. And then it goes beyond that. The Sea Org member is the highest of all Scientologists. But within the Sea Org, there's hierarchies too. So you've got the super high level of international levels, uh, what's called the Commodore Messenger Organization. What would, what would Cruz and, and Travolta be? What would they be? Well, in Cruz is right there at the very, very tip, top, top. He's, they're, they're not officially Sea Org members, but they're very close to, um, to the very top guy mm. who runs Scientology. Cruz is the right-hand man. He's called the second in command of Scientology. Gosh. Andrew Morton said that, and I absolutely agree with that 100%. It's incredible. We're speaking to uh, John Dyden here in the Unbox in Dublin's 98, author of the complex of book. Uh, but it's 22 years with an eventual escape from. We're going to get to that very shortly indeed from the, the, the Church of Scientology. Just very briefly, well, what exactly is it? The religion part? Because it seems to me more therapy than religion. <laughs> but but what, what exactly is the, the religion part of it? What, it, what no is religion, that? And what do you believe? No, no, that's a misconception, okay? And it's, it's a misconception that Scientology is very, very careful about presenting, right? Mm. You go into a Scientology quote-unquote church, right? I hope you can see those quotes I just put there, right? Yeah. It's not a church. It is a psychotherapy, and it's a paid-for psychotherapy. In order to do, if you call it a religion, in order to do that religion, to get to clear, it's going to cost you 45 grand. 100% it's going to cost you 45 grand. To go up to the upper levels, because to clear, you're only halfway there. You've got to go up to where Tom Cruise is, which is what's called OT7, Operating Thetan 7, That'll cost you a hundred grand. So one hundred forty-five grand later, you've made the grade. Okay. Or in my case, I dedicated my complete life. I said, okay, well, I bought into it, obviously, mm. um, and I said, okay, good. Well, that's 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 salvation. That's my salvation because in order for me to my next lifetime, yeah, in order to be free next lifetime, I have to dedicate this lifetime to being free. Why I'm sure, and I'm sure people listen. Um, and if you want to text in, you can at five three nine eight one. I'm sure people are wondering why did you stay for twenty two years? Well, first of all, you, you, I, again, look, please, 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 go to go out there and buy the book for God's sakes. I really, really, uh, I, and this is not look. It, it's not a matter of money for me, right? I, I, I don't make much money on that. I'm a poor student now. I've gone back to school. Right. Um, please go out and buy the book, and you have a little bit more understanding of it. But to give you a little bit of an outline of it, right? The the you are isolated very rapidly from the real world, from your friends, from your family, from your cultural reference points, right? Within a matter of look, within three months You're brainwashed, John. I was yeah, within three months I'd moved from being a well-traveled kind of, you know, uh, yes, I was troubled, obviously, because mm. I got into the organization, but I'd moved from that and I was in a military camp, uh, literally, it was a military camp in the Southern California desert, marching and chanting L. Ron Hubbard's diktats. That's what I was doing within a matter of months. And of course, any letters that came from my family, they were all opened and they were all read. Any telephone calls I made back, they were monitored. Any letters I wrote were read. Do you see? So I was completely separated from the real world very rapidly. You can imagine, if you've done that for two or three years, right? Um, now, uh, uh, my situation was I didn't have any degrees, didn't have any other qualifications when I left Scientology. Right? So the idea of leaving Scientology into this big bad world mm. in which you are taught is run by the evil psychiatrist the evil psychiatrists who have infiltrated the government who are trying to brainwash you. This is what Hubbard teaches us, you see. You're frightened of the real world because you've got no real reference points. And of course, of course, they, they, they play on that and play on that and play on that. And tell us this, because very unfortunate, I could talk to you on that, but unfortunately sure. we're, we're running out of time. Of At what point, because you, as you just said, yeah. you're in, you're alienated, and you're, you, you know, right. all of these type of things and you're isolating people. So it's very hard to, you know, to, to, to make well-adjusted decisions. At what point did you kind of, you know, surface again and think to yourself, this isn't quite right. There's something quite off here. What triggered well, that? From that point you've just said, that point happened in two in the year 2000, right? It took me five years to get from that point to being out of Scientology. It took you five, five years. years. It took me five years. And again, look, the stories uh, I've kind of, I, I hopefully I've really communicated clearly in the book, but that is how long it took me. 
uh, and you will uh, uh, did you have to break out John did you have absolutely. to physically oh, absolutely. break out they had people I mean I mean I mean uh, it was a very very carefully planned operation they don't let people leave Scientology you do not leave Scientology you're not allowed to leave Scientology they had people watching my house in Ireland my parents house not mm, my house mm -hmm. my, my parents house and then people going around to all my family now and the moment they knew I was gone but I was I, I was actually hiding out in northern Birmingham they thought I was in Ireland and I may I, that was absolutely on purpose because I had to do it that way mm. in there I talk about kidnapping and you know how many they, they do they do how many so they actually kidnapping is, is a practice of the church of Scientology they certainly don't call it kidnapping they call it salvaging but uh it's but it happens and they dress it up yeah. something else. You, you, you yeah. feared for your life, did you? Not my life, but uh, and this is, uh, I talk about a thing called the, uh, the Rehabilitation Project Force, which is literally a prison camp, a mental re-education, re-indoctrination camp. And I literally, um, I left as quite a high-level member, as quite a, as a highly respected person in Scientology across the UK and internationally as well. Quite a lot of people really looked up to me. If I had... I could have root, what's called rooted out, which has mm. gone out through the standard procedure that they have. But that procedure involves demeaning you in front of your friends and peers and people who respected you. So when you leave, you leave out as a complete scoundrel. You know, you're a dog. You, you're you know, banished. Like, so in front of your peers, you're down there, you're digging ditches and you're cleaning toilets and all kinds of stuff. You're covered in shit and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. You know, and and that's they want to make you look like that and you're allowed to leave there. But I said, no, I want to send a message to my friends and I've got a lot of... You've got to understand this, right? I work with people there who are very, very close and very, very dear to me. And I understand because, well, obviously, look, I went through the same things as they're going through. I suddenly saw the light and it, must, and it must be so hard for you as well not to want to go and salvage or kidnap or rescue them to an extent which is double standards to one thing but it's right it's, exactly. it's rational thinking john unfortunately uh, we, we do have to leave there give sure. us the full title of the book it's called the complex It's published by merlin it's available right now in in, in all the dublin bookstores from easton's to waterston's to um hughes and hughes. so it's out there now it's available please 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 buy it great Just John, John Dogman, the best of luck and the best of luck with the rest of your life. And Thank I, you. I hope, I hope you enjoy it. Lovely, lovely to talk to you. Thank you. You've been listening to a Dublin's 98 podcast. For more, visit Dublin's 98.ie.